Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk about generalized surfaces. Now, in today's part 17, we will talk about examples of smooth maps. However, of course, before we do that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, in the description you find a link to download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Now, for the topic of today, please recall that we have defined smooth maps between manifolds in the last video. Indeed, this was not so complicated, because we only needed two manifolds M and N and a continuous map between them. And then, by simply using charts, we could decide if this map is also differentiable or smooth. And then, we only have to look at the corresponding map here in Rn. In fact, for such a map here, the notion differentiable at a given point makes immediately sense. Moreover, we also see we can generalize this notion easily to other dimensions. So for example here, the manifold on the left hand side has dimension n, and now the manifold n on the right hand side has dimension m. Ok, and then with this you already know, we can define so called C infinity smooth maps between manifolds. And now today, we will look at examples. This is not so complicated because we already know some manifolds and now we just construct some maps and look if they are actually smooth. So let's start with a very common manifold, the two-dimensional sphere S2. And let's map this one into the three-dimensional space R3. And there you should know we have immediately a very natural map, the inclusion map. Often also called the canonical injection. This should not surprise you at all, because we have defined S2 as a subset of R3. Therefore, nothing really happens here, we just take a point x on the left hand side and send it to itself. And this is then what we call the inclusion map I. So you know, this is something we can always define for subsets. However, since now both objects here are manifolds, with more structures than just sets, we can ask the question if the inclusion map also has more properties. For example, it's immediately clear from the topologies that this is a continuous map. However, when we consider the standard smooth structures of our manifolds here, we can also ask is the inclusion map a smooth map by the definition above. More precisely, this means that we have to take charts and then consider the map from R2 to R3. For this, please recall part 10, where we have defined charts for S2. As a reminder, this was all about looking at different hemispheres of S2. And taking the southern hemisphere here gives us a map we called H3-. Indeed, this one was not complicated at all, it was just about forgetting the last component. So this means if we put an element, a vector with three components into H3-, minus, we get out an element with two components. Namely, in this case, just x1 and x2. However, this then also means that the inverse of H3- minus is a little bit more complicated. Of course, also this we can simply recall from part 10. So now here the input is just given by an element with two components and we have to reconstruct the third component for S2. And there you might remember this can be simply done by a square root. Ok, and with this now you know all the charts on the left hand side we can consider and now we can go to the right hand side. However, there it's much easier because we can just consider the identity map. So we don't actually need to write this down, but for the sake of completeness, let's include a map k, which is the identity map. Because now everything here looks like above what we need for the definition of a smooth map. So as said before, now we can consider the corresponding map here coming from i. So the question we want to answer here is, is this new map given by k after i after h inverse a smooth map? So maybe first we should check, is it a differentiable map? And in fact, this is not hard to answer at all, because the map is not complicated. More concretely, you should see, essentially, we have already written down the map here. As an input, we start with two components, and as an output, we end with three components. Indeed, 
after applying H inverse, the maps I and K will not do anything. So indeed, the value of this map at the given point x1 prime, x2 prime is given by this vector there. And it's not hard to see that this is actually a differentiable map. Moreover, you can show it's a C infinity function. Therefore, our inclusion map I here between manifolds is a smooth map. Of course, what we have skipped is that we can also consider all the other hemispheres here, but it works the same. Therefore, we get our result that this is our first abstract smooth map. Okay, then I would say we are ready for the second one. There, let's again take two manifolds we already know. So the first one should be S2 again. And the second one should be our projective space P2. Here, please recall, P2 is defined as a quotient space of S2. So it consists of equivalence classes of S2. And this means here we have a well-defined canonical projection we called Q. And it is simply defined by sending an element from S2 to its equivalence class. So it's well defined and by definition of the topologies a continuous map. However, here again we can ask is this also a smooth map when we see S2 and P2 as smooth manifolds? To answer this question we have to do the same as before, so we have to consider charts. Okay, let's draw the picture, which means we have to visualize P2 in some way. For this, please recall the equivalence relation is given as x is equivalent to y if x is equal to y or equal to the opposite, to minus y. This means for P2, we just identify two points on the same line through the origin. So you see, it's not easy at all to visualize this manifold here. However, the important part for us here is that we have also charts here. Now, on the left hand side, I want to take the same as before, so h3 minus. And on the right hand side, we can take a chart as we have defined it in part 11. And maybe we simply call it k here. So maybe here we quickly recall how one of the maps can be defined. So the input of k is an equivalence class where the vector inside has three components. And the output is a vector with two components and given in some sense as slopes. For example, we can have x1 divided by x3 and x2 divided by x3. So this is one possibility for such a map that actually corresponds to the southern hemisphere as well here. And please note, with the equivalence relation here, it also corresponds to the northern hemisphere. However, the important thing is, it's defined on the region on the manifold where the x3 component here is non-zero. Therefore, division with x3 here is not a problem at all. Okay, now by knowing this, we can look at the new map here from R2 to R2. So it's k after q after a3 minus inverse. And the question as always is, is this a differentiable map? And to answer this, let's go step by step through the picture. The first step we already know, h inverse sends this point to the sphere, such that we have a vector with three components, including this square root. And then, in the next step, our canonical projection q comes. There, not a lot happens, we just take the equivalence class of the given point. Okay, and then in the last step, we send this equivalence class to R2 again. So this is what the map k does. So you see, what we have here is now a division by this whole square root there. So first we divide x1 prime by it and then x2 prime. So you see, we get out a well-defined vector in R2 again. Okay, and now please don't forget, the question is, is the map from the left hand side immediately to the right hand side here a differentiable one? And you should immediately see, you can form all partial derivatives here without any problem. So it's a differentiable map and moreover a C infinity function. So in summary you see, this is an easy observation. Now, in addition you should see, we can expand this argument here to all the other charts, such that we can cover all the points on S2. So in conclusion, we always get a C infinity function out here, 
such that our canonical projection Q is indeed a smooth map between manifolds. And with this, we now have two examples of smooth maps. So this closes the topic of today and let's continue the discussion about manifolds in the next video. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.